Hello and welcome to Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. It's the secret show. We've been gone a week, but now we're back. And here's to revealing all the secrets of this matrix that we live in. Hello, Mark Sargent. Hello. Hey, this is an empty glass. Well, mm. fill it up, mister. Yep. <laughs> it's like the Sahara over here. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. What are you drinking? What's your uh, I'm drinking cheap red wine. Ah. And this is a healthy pour, as they call it. That's, I think, three glasses full. Nah. No, you're, we're good. You're a big man. You can handle it. You're over six feet. No, I'm a big man. <laughs> I've got um, cranberry juice, grapefruit juice, and vodka. Nice. Cheers. Hmm. Ooh, a little on the strong side. <laughs> Mine looks way more like blood than yours. <laughs> Just so you know. Wait, I'm the one accused of that, not you. Well, yeah, I know. Get your false accusations right. <laughs> I'm just saying that that's not even really the right color for Hollywood blood. Well, Hollywood blood or, or crisis actor blood, they never show it dried and brown. It's mm. always bright red. If or they black. show any at all. Or black. Yeah. Yes. If it, if well, it dries completely, it, it dries black like a scab on your knuckle. Exactly. Uh, but if you keep it wet, then it turns brown. Like a wilted plant, it turns Very brown. interesting. Yes, which is a whole other thing I don't want to get into. Wilting plants? No, just <laughs> just blood. Blood and scabs from punching haters exactly. in Exactly, probably not the best opening. How are you? <laughs> um, <coughs> I'm glad to see you. And I notice you're not wearing a hat. I am not wearing a hat today. Uh, so people in the chat room, which I cannot see because I never have the chat room open, please comment on uh, whether or not you like that. Because as you you and I know, I've gone through a lot of different hats. Right. And I, in fact, I don't own any hats with logos anymore. And I only have a few baseball hats. Most of them are those military style hats. Mm -hmm. And it is kind of one of my signature things. But people have asked me, it's like, hey, you know, what about your hair? And it's like, well, this is about as good as it's going to get this hair right here. I think you look great, and you look nice with a hat too. So whatever, whatever floats your boat. Well, thank you. I, again, I will at the chat room. People, let me know what you what you think. Hat, no hat. All right, everyone, vote in the chat room and hello, live chat. Thank you for being here. Yes, this is the secret show, and we were off last week. Now today, I have a tree outside to my right. There's a window, and this is I'm in the front of the house where I have this room set up as a studio. And uh, the tree in front is a water oak, and it has passed its lifespan. I've tried keeping it alive for the past two years. I've had an arborist here who's trimmed the limbs, and it just reached that point where they had to take it down. I've been sad to the point of tears about having to kill the tree, although I've been told that it's dying anyway. But all day long since 9 in the morning, and right now where I am in Ca I almost said California, I wish, uh, <laughs> where I am in Texas in Houston, the um, the work out there, the grinding, the chainsaws, etc., has been going on since you know since nine, and now it's it's about five thirty p.m. So it's um, they're into the stump grinding now, and that was a pretty big tree, and I would never take down a living tree ever, ever. It just hurts my heart that I had to, but that thing was supposedly hollow according to the arborist and could have fallen and crushed my house or the house next door. So it had to go. So I'm only saying this because we did talk about wilting plants, but if there's any crazy noise outside, that's what's happening. Got um, it. <laughs> but Got it. lots of things happening, secret show and cocktails and flat earth conversation and lots of interesting topics. This is going to be a good show. Um, there is an astronaut, a real astronaut on Match.com. Those who followed along with this show may have heard about the fact that I went on a date with an astronaut way before Flat Earth came around here in Houston. Anyway, I messaged this astronaut, and um, Mark and I can read through the messaging back and forth that happened on Match.com. Very interesting. Other conversational starters, Alex Jones has teamed up with Logan Paul. <laughs> Another topic, I'm going to try to see if I can get Chris Van Maitre to pop in when we discuss this one. The other object that potentially is in the sky that looks like the sun, or it's a reflection of the sun. A lot of uh, interest toward that, and Crow 777, and drama and controversy. 
Um, also, the quote photo of a black hole that's come out. We're going to talk about that. Israel is on the moon, they say. Supposedly uh, tomorrow. <laughs> and the New Zealand conference. That's coming right up. And also, since we were talking about crisis actors and fake blood, the Nipsey Hustle death or Nipsey hoaxel thing. We'll find out a little bit more about that as our show progresses. And then anything else that happens to, to come along. Also, immediately following this show, there is going to be a channel you might want to go to. Rodrigo Ferrari Nunes is going to be uh, premiering something he's put together right after this show ends on his channel. That's Rodrigo Ferrari Nunes. And it's an <coughs> interview with the makers of Behind the Curve. Uh, the video that will be discussed is the one done with the Behind the Curve uh, direct cameraman and the, whole, the, the, the trio uh, that they did on a need, the Need More Space channel. And Rodrigo Ferrari Nunez loves breaking down things and looking at the meanings behind things. And he'll be doing that directly after this show. So we better jump right in. Um, I want to talk to you about what you've been doing first before all that other stuff. Australia? Yeah, it. I've been doing a lot of stuff. Uh, yeah. Since the, as you know, the Netflix documentary Behind the Curve came out and went everywhere. Uh, and I did the, I think we talked about it last week, I did the Today Show in Australia uh, via feed. We, I had to go out to a television studio in Seattle and broadcast from there. And then after that, three different Australian radio stations picked it up and decided they wanted to talk to me. And I did the last of the three this morning. And I did a segment with them called, and I don't even know what the stations are, to be honest. Uh, I just I just say yes and just do it. Uh, but it was the segment was called Change My Mind, where I got five minutes to talk about my point, get my point cries. Here's why I believe in flat earth. Boom, 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 boom. And then they open up the phone lines. And the phone lines apparently just erupted. Uh, because, you know, there was a lot of people, but there were apparently a lot of people in support, but they weren't going to let those calls through. I only knew oh. about this from the producer and I left that audio in there because I recorded on my side as well. And so the producer is talking to me afterwards and she was talking to me about people that were supporting, but they weren't going to let those calls in because there's not enough drama in those calls. Nobody wants to be like, yeah, Mark, you're totally right. Well, <laughs> that's, that's the end of the phone call. So, right, right. But yeah, I, I've been doing a lot of those and a lot more universities and high schools so and in fact what do i have lined up between now and real quick uh let's see here high school high school radio station in colorado a trinity broadcasting network of all things they're coming up here uh before i head off to the new zealand conference which we'll talk about in a second it's like mm -hmm. wow big christian network is gonna come up and talk to me i better you know better have my chapter and verse down yeah, exactly. And then another high school the day after, and then uh, a, a podcast, two podcasts after that, um, one podcast after we, we get back from the conference. But wow. Yeah, super busy. It's exciting. Exciting times. Yeah. Oh, so oh, oh, and, up. and, sorry, I got to throw this in there. And mm -hmm. the uh, the Fallen State <laughs> has oh, finally released. Right, the Fallen yeah. State. And this harkens back a couple of months. And you and I were in the Los Angeles area, and yep. you did a debate. And uh, you were you were one of the few people that was you were the only audience member other than uh, <laughs> Robbie Davidson. Exactly. We were there watching you on stage do quite well in this debate. And then I wondered when when are they going to air it and when are you going to put it on your channel? Uh, OK, well, two things. <laughs> it shouldn't shock you because, as you know, you were not allowed to film in there. Right. Well, they were filming. And so they contacted me and they said, oh, yeah, here, here's the teaser for it. And they've been releasing it in chunks. They, they like it so much that they're releasing it in five minute chunks and they'll release another chunk tomorrow. And then, of course, the whole thing will come out on Friday. So they said, oh, can you please put the teaser in your social media? And then they said, oh, so glad you did that. Just so you know, you can't put anything else. And I was like, OK, so I mean, literally, I couldn't put those five minute highlight reels. I can't put the whole thing. It's crazy because you took your own time and money to get to their studio in L.A. We walked around. We ate really bad food somewhere waiting to go do that thing. We weren't yeah. allowed to film while in it. It wasn't the most welcoming environment. And no. We weren't paid to do it. You weren't paid to do it. No. And um, then they say you can't use it. 
Yeah, again, you sign the forms. Uh, yeah, okay. I yeah, I get it, I get it. You sign the release forms saying, look, it's theirs. And I haven't had to sign a lot of release forms, but that is one of them. Coast to Coast was another one, uh, Nat Geo, mm. or some other. If I had done ABC, it would have been ABC. So it was cool. Uh, again, I, I'm I'm happy that they're, they're hyping it up. I'm happy they released it. I think yes. the debate went well. I don't think it it's going to go... It's probably not going to go too well for uh, the physicist that was on because now he's he's actually, you know, up until that point, he wasn't there. You know, the Flat Earthers, we always talk about this stuff, but I imagine the corporation that he's working for is not going to be too thrilled about him being on there uh, debating a Flat Earther from a both religious and scientific standpoint. But and whatever. You did well, too. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, I do want to make a very important announcement. I mean, this is probably the most important part of my whole show. Bob Nodal and Cammie Nodal have got a new puppy. <laughs> really? Yeah. Uh, D.O.G., their dog died somewhat recently. Rest in peace. And they have a new puppy. Super, super cute. But the other day on Facebook, Bob was posting, what should we name the dog? And I don't know if they Barky. come up with a name yet. But Barkles. <laughs> one of the funny name suggestions from people on Facebook was Bark Sergeant. <laughs> See, <laughs> normally I would say I heartily endorse this product and or event. Mm. However, Bark Sergeant, I don't think that should be a trend. Well, I suggested Troll and Gravity, which aren't that great. Other people had oh, better man. suggestions, but Bob's in the live chat and says, I think we finally figured out the perfect killer name for our puppy. So we're waiting to hear, Bob. <laughs> and uh, a lot of people were putting comments in the live chat about um, your hat. So some people are saying, you know, leave the hat on. I'm not used to seeing you like that. Uh, that's what freaking Chris, people out. Chris Lee Lewis says, I'm not used to seeing your hair, LOL. So let me well, see. Well, most can... of the time, you got to remember for the longest time, I shaved my head, you know, with clippers. I, I just love, I like the feel your of it. It's longer now. I can yeah, see. Yeah, it's, it. way, it's way, it's longer and it has been in a long time. And I, I did that deliberately just to see what people would say. So, uh, it's actually done for the ladies more than anything. Mm. Yeah, that's right. It's cause, well, no, because I, I, I appreciate the, the opinion of women. Look, I have no fashion sense and I have no sense of style whatsoever. And so, we, I, I, I've always relied on um, The female, kindness of uh, strangers? The kindness, of, no, the <laughs> kindness of women. I, I basically find a, a, attractive women. I say, okay, what do you think? Of this and whatever they say, it's like okay because why I when I see in the mirror and what they see, I think are completely different things. Um, well, you say that you see Shrek. Um, I see I, monsterism. <laughs> yes, it's I horrible. see Mark Sargent. That's what I see. <sighs> but uh, people are saying either way. Either way, you know. Well, um, we'll let it go. I'm gonna I'm gonna let go of the whole show and and see if it if it grows on people. All right, it there grows on people. Grow hair. Um, going. Plus up remember. Here. Plus remember, I'm fifty. So it's not like I'm trying to create some sort of weird illusion. Guys, uh, it's it's different for guys. So Well, I don't know. I think women, if there's two ways women go as they age, they either try to create an illusion of being young, which right. I think is a bad idea, or they try to make the best of becoming an older woman. That's the way I go. It's a tough uh, call either way for a woman. I mean, you're an aberration, so we can't really use you no, as No, I want to age with dignity, still try to look nice, but realize I'm no teenager, so I'm not going to wear short right. skirts or, you know, crop tops or that. You're, you're no, no one wants to see that. <laughs> no one. I think my cats would leave if that, if that ever happened. And by the way, you know what? I, I want to throw this out there. Uh, it still comes down for me to personality more than anything. Which when it is, comes to women? Yeah, when it comes to well, when it comes to women and men, which is whatever shines through. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Mm. All right. Had a little drink before we started. Let me see if um Bob has mentioned the name of the dog yet, and then we'll get to the real serious stuff. All right. Um, trying to find. Don't see it yet. There. Uh, Diana Ebrader says, "I always wondered what you look like with no hat, Mark." Looks oh, I've been good. really good about not doing it. I mean, not I'm haven't been as religious as like say Ron Howard, but Ron Howard's got a weird head, plain hmm. and simple, and he knows that. I never looked actually. I don't. Know. I don't have a great head, but that's. I mean, I have. A, I'm, it's big. It's big. I can't wear. It's not a size nine hat, but you do. You guys don't understand. 
remember that kid on Jerry Maguire? It's like, do you know they had, what the average human head weighs eight pounds or nine pounds or whatever he said? Yeah, I, was, I just laughed and that kid said that. It's like, whatever. <laughs> Funny. That kid couldn't even pick up my head. Um, Bob of Globuster says, you know, because we were talking about the pup, the new puppy's name that the, that their son, Jaron and Cammy and he have, he writes, we were thinking his name should be, wait for it, Dave. Like the Cheech and Chong skit, Dave. <laughs> so Dave's not okay. here. That whole thing, Dave. Okay. No, Dave's good. I'm just wondering where they got it. I'm thinking it's the Cheech and Chong skit. Maybe. Maybe we could uh, get them to name the dog D-I-T-R-H, because that's kind of like Dave. Mm. Anyway, D-I-T-R-H has just arrived in the chat. And hello to Lisa J. Prefer Flat, No One's Flower, Fired for Truth. Hello, how are you? Andres Ace and the Adam Meekin asking me, what's my drink? A tiny bit of vodka, but I think even too much. And uh, cranberry juice and grapefruit juice. Hi to page 42. And um, oh, No One's Flower, Nora says, I think the puppy should be named Yin Yang. Maybe because it is a black and white or a light and dark color. Yin Yang? Yeah, mm. well, makes sense, makes sense. Uh, Chris Van Maitre is here, and like I said, he's going to be joining us a little bit later to talk about what's going on in the sky. Um, ooh, the Adam Meekin says, call the dog Perspective. It's kind of a long name, but I get I get where you're going. Uh, Martin Liebke is here as well. Hello. And want to say hello to the Astral Thief and the Jedi of Truth, Louis T. And I'm scrolling up. Art by Act, Red Eye Jack, 420 UK. And... Uh, Gabe Ramirez is here, scrolling up by names I've already mentioned. Where am I? Who am I? Oh, Farley Ferraria. Ferraria. Sorry. For one second. Hi, Farley. How are you? Thanks for being here. Um, I can do this while you're doing whatever you're doing. Darren Wagner, hello to you. And uh, scrolling a little bit. Oh, hello to Nicole Cote. Hey. And fast. Teddy Flat Ted says, thank God you guys are back. Seven Raven Wolf. Did I say hi to you already? Hi, I hope you're doing well. There's so many good people that when I see your names, you know that I, I just feel happy that you're here. Or it could be the alcohol. <laughs> Hello to Vinny. Thank you for being here in Corey Brass and Closet Steve. Hey, and Bouquet and Garda, your wedding videographer as well. And I think I'm all caught up with saying the hellos for the moment. Rob Hughes and Stephen Michael just joined, and Seabat is here too, and LC King as well. So, oh, I think Ginger Sugarbush905 just popped in. All right. Seabat says I'm new. Welcome. Ah, oh, Cammie says that she likes the name Percy for a dog. I love that name. I vote for Percy. I vote for Mark having a hat or no hat based on his whim, and the dog's name should be Percy. Okay, all problems solved in the world. Um, hello to all people, free people, and kill the bank. Glad to have you here, too. And Brian Burton. Um, oh, we've got somebody voting no hat. Finally, somebody's made a, a decision here, an executive decision, because everyone's saying it's good either way. And that's Stephen Michael L., who says no hat. So... Um, I'll keep Brian. no hat for a while. I'm going to do no hat for the, uh, the Trinity broadcasting interview. Because mm -hmm. it's video, and then we'll we'll see, we'll see. I you know I'll just kind of play it by ear. Well, perhaps we could start things off with instead of making Chris Van Matry wait and wait and wait for when were they going to talk about what's what's in the what's in the sky, what's up with the sun? Um, maybe we can ask Chris Van Matry to click the link that I sent him and come on in right now. Um, did you watch the last Globusters? By the way, I know you <laughs> pop in and out of shows. Uh, I did not this time yet because I just was flooded with other things. Get a member. I also did that um, that uh, interview with the. Uh, it was more of a cross examination with that lawyer, mm. uh, Viva Fry. So sorry, I didn't. Oh, well, you're kicking. Uh, no, look, I can't. <laughs> look, there's only so uh, many hours in the day. I can no. absorb a lot of stuff, but I, I can't. I only say so that much content I, out there. I missed it live as well. And I was had another obligation that I had to attend to that was really fun, but still. But I did watch it later, and it was one of the best shows they've ever done. They had David on there, David Weiss, D I T R. Was it the one with the um, the probe Jewish triple seven? The Jewish probe. Um, no, that... they were talking about 
photography done by Crow Triple Seven and Chris oh, I, no, I did, I'm sorry, I did see some of that. Yes, I did. Crow yeah. was on there for a long time. Yeah, right. It was really good, and other people were on too. Jason Lindgren was on there too, and they were talking about the new Shoot the Moon film that's out that you can you can uh, you can purchase and watch. But Chris Van Maitre, who's going to pop on in a second, he and Crow filmed something in the sky that many people are saying is um, evidence, I guess you could say, for, I don't want to say a second son because it's not Nibiru or something like that, hmm. um, for something. The something that I, with my non-scientific mind, I'm more of a social mind, would say would be if we are living on a flat earth and we are enclosed on some level, there is something akin to, go with me on this, a flashlight outside the dome. We use the word dome because it's easy for people to get. Right. And that flashlight is shining through the dome slash firmament, whatever, and then giving us the, the heat and the image of the sun. Right. And it looked like what was captured was, for lack of a better term, the flashlight and the light from it, which is our sun, hmm. in photography done by Crow Triple Seven and by Chris Van Maitre. And when Chris did it, there were telephone wires that were in the way when he took the one that was just the sun that we see. And in the sun that we don't see, flashlight thing, um, there was a slight darkening on that portion of the sun. And people were saying, oh, well, that proves that it's a reflection or it's lens flare or, you know, some sort of issue. And then other people were saying, oh, it's definitely trickery. Um, Crow is tricking people. Chris is tricking people. Right. And then others were saying, like me, wow, really interesting. Let's find out more. And it caused some infighting on social media. And, well, what doesn't these days within this truth movement? Because as we look for truth, we have to all remember we were suspicious of things everything which is right. how we got here in the first place right. so you really can't blame somebody for looking into anything at all uh the attacking that comes later that i can blame people for doing but when it comes to questioning people and their motives hey i'm all for it chris van matry has joined us hello chris thank you for taking some time to to come on the secret show well thank you for having me on oh we don't have sound chris your microphone <laughs> Turn on your microphone. Oh, it looks like he's frozen. No, he's not. No, he's moving. He's moving. <laughs> no sound. Chris, set your hit. Go up to the gears. Nope. Now you are muted. Uncheck that. Go up to the gears and check your default microphone. Pull it down and see what it, it's it's saying. Force it to whatever the options are. You know, Go. when I interviewed Chris, I think we had a microphone issue as well, and I forgot how we solved it. Most of the time, it's rebooting. That can help. Now you're muted. And now you're unmuted. I'm sure this is very fascinating for our audience at home. And I want to blame myself for this because I thought about asking Chris as we'd already started the show. We would have done a mic, mic check had I been more professional. Best laid plans of <laughs> hot potatoes. Yes, exactly. So Chris is going to work on that. Maybe he'll work on pop that. Out, pop in. Do you want? Do you want to do while we're waiting for him? Do you yeah. want to do the? Chris, um, just start talking if you feel you've got it, or you can reboot. Come yeah, back. you can. You can interrupt because I think you want to do the astronaut thing, don't you? Uh, yeah, let's do that. Let's talk about this. I will preface what I'm about to say, which is, back in I'm going to guess on the year 2008, maybe something like that. that. Yeah, give or take. I went on Match.com. I was living in Houston, Texas, and I was on match and I was like saying, oh, you know, I'd like to meet somebody nice. And although I wasn't a flat earther, or I had no idea, I still was me. And I'm definitely a person who doesn't believe everything in the matrix and never has. Right. And also, I'm just a very particular person in general about who I spend my time with. I've made some mistakes with men before. Any who've been around the show for a while might know what I'm talking about, but I'm very open and very trusting. But sometimes I just get a bad vibe right away. And uh, that happens when you can meet somebody in person, 
immediately upon, you know, interacting with them, you get, you can get a bad vibe. Right. I mean, if you meet online on the internet and talk for a very long time, you can get bamboozled by the personality. And then when you meet them, you're already predisposed to think highly of them. Sure. But when it comes to just a match.com, you know, exchange a few lines of text, then you go for a dinner and then you decide whether you like them or not. Well, what usually has happened in my case is first date is last date, you know, <laughs> first date is last date. The minute I walk in the door, I'm like, Oh no, I need to be polite and nice and get out of here as soon as I can. Anyway, this was one such thing. I met this guy and he told me he was an astronaut. He told me a little bit about himself and he told me, you know, at that time I didn't think astronauts were really anything special. I mean, I, I mean, I thought they were America's heroes or something, but I didn't think about them like fake space and liars. I thought they were right. probably heroes, but I didn't really think about NASA or space at all. I was just like most of us, not really that concerned with space. I, I thought we went to the moon. I mean, I just thought that whatever. Sure. Anyway, so this guy told me a restaurant to meet at and we met at the restaurant. It was kind of yuck, but anyway, <laughs> that told me a little bit about him. And during dinner, he was okay, but a little bit overtly sexual in the conversation he had with me, which immediately is something I dislike completely because I don't present myself like that at all. That's something for private moments once you get to know somebody. Anyway, after the date was over, he walked me out to my car parked in the lot and he grabbed my ass, for lack of a better word, in a, which is super bad to begin with, but the way he did it, and he wasn't drunk or anything, it was just so disgusting that I, I kind of wriggled free, got in my bye, and was nice and drove away. And then really, as I you drove away, those, well, I never. <laughs> one of those. I mean, I could have, I should have, but I didn't. I just figured, okay, that guy's not for me. What a creep. And by the and, way, the word you were looking for, for lack of a better word, was badonkadonk. Yeah, badonkadonk. <laughs> no, <laughs> but thank you anyway. Oh, no, no, that's all right. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> all right. Yes. Don't forget to tip your waitress. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Mm. Maybe it should have anyway. been. I'm having now. a drink just to continue with this conversation, which <laughs> contains the word badunkadunk. Badunkadunk. What is my life been reduced to? Yeah. Anyway, so I drove away, and then I pulled over, and I texted a girlfriend of mine, and I said, hey, that guy was a total idiot. And I remember writing to her and saying, it turns out astronauts aren't these proud, brave men after all. They're just bus drivers of the sky. That's what I wrote. Right. Of course, at that point, I still thought they did space stuff messaged the guy and said, you know, I, I enjoyed our date, but we just aren't a match. Good luck. And then I deleted his, you know, information and blocked him on the match.com site and went on with my life and completely forgot about him. Well, Flash recently, forward, 10 years later, <laughs> recently I went on match.com again. So do you want me to start in? Yeah. Let me, right, so let me I'm look gonna it up. Playing, I'm going to be playing the part of, <laughs> I'm not going to name him, right? Uh, we could name his first name. We could name the name he goes by on Mash.com. He goes by the name Landon. Right. Now, this person wrote me. I don't. My policy with internet dating is I'm not going to approach men because I'm not a man approacher in real life either. I'm right. old fashioned and all of that. Okay. Let's. Ready? Okay. Wait. No, I have to. I, I sent all these to Mark on Skype. The actual screen. Oh, I'm, I'm already there. I got the it. Match.com conversation. Up to the top of this. And I've got to find it. I could play your part too. You want to? I'm an understudy for everybody. You're good. All right, I'm trying to find it. I had to do a lot. I have to do a lot of scrolling. I here. could understudy Chris right now. <laughs> well, let's just check in with Chris. Chris, Can Chris I see you there? Uh, nope. He's hello? still. Wait, no, you... he may just you. But you may just want to reboot if you haven't rebooted in a while, Chris. Yeah, reboot. It, okay. Seriously, it it tur right. turn it off, turn it back on again. So I'm gonna start. Okay, so the other day, I messaged Mark and said, "Hey, remember when I told a story on a secret show? Because the story I just told about the date I told previously on another show. Right, right, right." So anyway, I wrote, remember when I told a story on The Secret Show about being on Match.com and how I met an astronaut way before Flat Earth, maybe 2010 or so, and how I met him at a restaurant of his choice, and he was weird, and after dinner he walked and grabbed me as I got into the car in a creepy, aggressive, and sexual manner. Right. Well, I'd forgotten the name. This is me writing Mark. Of course, it was on a date. I blocked his number and his name. Guess who tried to contact me today? Right. He'd forgotten he met me before. And then I sent the screenshot of this guy whose name is Landon. And the conversation... Um, Goes you're going to play the part of Landon and I'm yep. going to play the part of me. So you go ahead. Okay. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Hi, I like your profile. My name is Mike. And I immediately recognized the picture and I wrote, you're the astronaut, right? Uh, why do you ask that? I wrote, because I know you are just wanted to confirm. Got it. 
And then, and then I Googled and found the guy's real name, which I'm not going to share here. Right. But he's a current astronaut who is uh, a person who's been on the ISS. Okay. Just let everybody know. All right. How do you know who I am? Have we met? I don't recall oh. that. I got to scroll down to where that is. Do I got sound? Then I wrote, maybe we have met. See, I'm playing coy here because I because I've decided. Yes. Okay, I'm going to try to get some information out of him that I never could have got out of him before in 2010 because I didn't know about fake space, right? So I'm like, right. golden opportunity talking to an astronaut. Right. So I wrote, maybe we have met. Flutter eyelashes. <laughs> I forgot. Have you been to space? <laughs> <laughs> The lingerie photos you sent were awfully forward. <laughs> Stop. Oh, I'm sorry. No, uh, this is kind of weird. Are you a friend of a friend of mine or something? What difference does it make if I've been to space or not? Then I wrote, I think I met you once. Well, I was trying to see if you're the one who went to space or it was another astronaut. I'm not meaning to be rude. Smiley face. Hmm. So as you can see, I'm trying to play along to see if I can get some in true information out of him. Okay, thanks. I didn't mean to imply that you were being rude. When and where do you think we met? It seems like I would have remembered you, and I can't recall that now. Has it been fairly recently or many years ago? I wrote, I think a long time ago, but have you gone to the ISS? <laughs> I'm a little transparent at this point for any flat earther. Uh, oh, no, you keep going. Um, oh, yes, I do. I wrote, I was always wondering if you can see stars and what it's like to go from the atmosphere into the vacuum of space. So fascinating. Also, one more question. Hope I'm not bothering you, smiley face. Did you feel anything or sense anything going through the Van Allen radiation belts? So this is kind of strange. I wish I had a better sense of who I was talking to. Are you a friend of a friend of mine or some sort? Or did we meet at an event or something a long time ago? And I don't quite follow where you're coming from. I did make the first spacewalk from the ISS. I wrote, we met <clears throat> once. I'm sure of it. Maybe on match. This is where I'm being honest. Anyway, wow, you were on a spacewalk? Scary. That's cool. Could you see stars? <laughs> and this is where I go into the whole, uh, this is his hook. This is how he gets the girls. He's been on match for a long time. Yeah, and he's way. used the same picture. It's exactly the same picture. And yeah. I have different pictures because I've aged, so I'm being honest with people. Yeah, he has been playing you this like a record. All right. <laughs> uh, on my first whip spacewalk, one of my tasks was to evaluate these glove heaters. So I was up on the robot arm in the middle of the night with all the lights out, and you could see the stars really clearly, like a thousand times brighter than the middle of the ocean. And you could see Jupiter and its four moons with your naked eye. As far as I know, that's one of the very few times in history that someone's been on a spacewalk with all the lights out. When the lights are on, it really diminishes the view of the stars. You can see the Earth great. But the stars, not so much so. Ugh. So instead of throwing up, I wrote, that's interesting. Was it scary? No. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm getting into this character. Nah, it's no big deal. <laughs> it was just really cool. It was kind of mind-blowing. Then you go from <laughs> night to day in about 25 seconds. So for about 25 seconds, you just hang in there on space between day and night in what's called the Terminator which is the line between day and night and ocean per and ocean permeates up into space permeates. So you feel like you're just suspended in this infinite ocean. That's him being poetic, by the way. Right. And I wrote the only thing I could write. Well, aside from using profanity and start accusing him of the truth, I wrote, wow. <laughs> then I wrote, what about the radiation belts? Do they cause sickness or any issues? In the space shuttle, in the space shuttle in, oh, clever, on ISS, uh, we're about 900 miles low. Well, I'm sorry. We're about 100 miles lower than the first of the Van Allen belts. We didn't have to go through them. We did in Apollo, and you just go fast. You go fast, limit the radiation dose. He should have put a comma there. It doesn't matter. We do get a lot more galactic cosmic radiation in space than we do on the surface of the Earth because there's no protection from the atmosphere. And so at night, you're constantly seeing like explosions in your brain which is cosmic rays getting your rent getting your rent 
<laughs> right now, like a fire, like a fire, fire, fireworks show in your brain. I was half expecting him to say, I think I have superpowers now, <laughs> like the Fantastic Four. I'm really great in bed too now. <laughs> wow. It's almost like what he's saying. Um, I wrote laser light show exclamation point. Just playing this sort of dumb role to get him to say more stuff. Right. And uh, then he writes. So what kind of work do you do? You seem to know a lot about space. <laughs> and by the way, I've not really said too much about space. But anyway, so I wrote, oh, I'm interested in the topic. I do internet research. I thought about saying I'm a flat earther, but I decided maybe he could call a drone strike on me and I'd be dead by morning. So, <laughs> okay, let's see here. Da, da, da. Then um, I wrote, anyway, gotta go. Yep. Nice chatting. <laughs> uh, and it, he he wasn't going to give up. Not yet. No, nope. no, nope. you're you are a tasty morsel on a hook. So. You do internet research as a profession or just as a hobby. What part of town do you live in? What, what's your sign? <laughs> exactly. Then I said nothing because I already said I was going to go. I have a double Gemini with a bad moon rising. No, he didn't say that. Uh, let's see here. So I guess I'm... Wait a minute. What happened there? So I'm just asking. Oh, I'm sorry. He kept going. Mm -hmm, he did. Oh, I'm sorry. He did. Uh, so I guess I'm just asking you to be honest because if... If you're messing cuz, really, with a Z, you know me through a friend or whatever if you're honestly interested in talking about a relationship. And then when I saw that, even if I'd already said goodbye, I was a bit annoyed that he would be thinking that I'm interested in a relationship. So I wrote, I'm not interested in a relationship with you. I just thought I recognized you and asked a few questions. I don't know you through a friend or anyone. Good luck on here. <laughs> uh, I don't think that was the end, though. No, it's not. It's never the end. <laughs> I had to block him in the end, but go ahead. Okay. Really? You blocked him in the end? Mm -hmm. Really? Okay. Mm -hmm. I didn't tell you that part. Uh, okay. Thanks for being honest. Not sure you're, why you're not... Uh, why, why you're, you're not, not infant... In, infant rela oh in a relationship spell yeah. checker infant relationships like ooh that's that's a little <laughs> dicey creepy uh, with me but uh, that's meant, fine um, not sure why you're not interested in a relationship with right you. but that's fine good luck and so why is it that you're not interested in a potential relationship I'm in a relationship now that's not going well so I'm looking for something else but I'm not sure why you asking all these questions and you're absolutely not interested in me. So you're a complex person. Might as well say so. So you have a very old soul. Here, here's some pictures of my genitals. <laughs> uh, and I like to understand a little bit about the rationale of your thought process. We're, we're not, we can just, or not, we can just move on and go away and that's okay with me. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Not the best writing in the world, but that's okay. Well, no, I think that was and, the end. That was it. No, there's one more. Next. Uh, next uh, and these are real, by the way. Anybody can kind of look at. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. The, the uh, right last... here, they can see. Wait, because they can see. Oh, wait, wait. You're right. There's two more paragraphs. Sorry. There's Back more. To... So, so people know that we're not making. This isn't he, some high theater we've come up with. Doing, this really he, happened. He's doing speech to voice. So bad dictation. And, 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 but not even just that. I already said goodbye and no thank you. And he's pushing still. He Really? Just like Cause... he grabbed me in the parking. It's the same guy. I mean, it's the same. I know you haven't gone to a lot of singles bars, but come on. This is what guys do. I'm not saying it's a good thing. I'm just saying that the, what he's doing is is textbook, especially if you're an astronaut or someone's claiming to be an astronaut. And he contacted me, by the way. That's true. Uh, bad dictation through this, but I really am not sure why you contacted me, which he didn't. I didn't. Uh, or why you're not even not interested because I'm an astronaut for God's sakes. Yes. I'm a freaking, I'm a freaking stallion. Uh, you don't even know me, so I'm not sure where you're coming from, but I think you're pretty strange. But... <laughs> But it is a good luck. It is a good luck. I like your profile, and I thought we had something in common. Obviously, you're entering space, but for whatever reason, you're not interested in me. I find that odd, which I've got to mention, that would be strange to him because most women, if they got down past the title of him being an astronaut, that's it. It's like, so what kind of car you drive? That would be it. But well, that, for me, funny. when I initially decided to go meet him for dinner, I thought it was interesting that he was an astronaut back in 2010. Sure. But anyway, to make a long story short, I thought it was interesting that aside from being a creepy person um, and very pushy and aggressive sexually, he's saying that same line that all of the astronauts have said about what it's like to be in space. Basically, they all toe the same party line. 
Hey, um, I don't know if you got this, but uh, Globusters said we are hearing Chris. You and Patricia are not hearing Chris. Mm. Mm. So if Chris unmutes and talks. Hello. Let me. All right. Say Hello. a few things, Chris. Can you hear me? Testing one, two, three, whatever. Testing one, two. No, three. don't hear it all. All right. But does the chat hear him? Okay. Look let in me chat. Does the chat yeah. hear Chris when he talks? Chris, Test say your name. One, two, three. You're Sorry. Sure. The Chris, whole story could have been Chris talking. We might have ruined everything. I'm sorry, guys. Okay. So do we, do you guys hear Chris talking? Chris Van Matry. Yeah. Chris Van Matry. Do you hear him talking? Yep. So people just say yes or no. Mm -hmm. Hello, anyone? Hello, Come hello. On. <laughs> Martin Liebke says, is this dude writing from an asylum? Uh, nobody has said yes or no. Well, they know, they hear us, right? Yeah. <laughs> is any, are, are we on? <laughs> are we on? <laughs> uh, I don't know what to tell you, Did Chris. Did they call I have the seen this drum one. strike on? Okay, so Nora says, I hear Chris. Everyone's saying they hear Chris. What? Oh. I have seen this with Google Hangouts. I don't know why, and I've only seen oh. this in the last three or four weeks, which is sometimes whoever logs in or whoever mm -hmm. creates the Hangout, mm -hmm. there's nothing you can do. That we, if we can't hear Chris, there's nothing we can do because you created the Hangout. So basically... We're stuck. We're stuck. Sorry, okay. Chris. Everyone unless, unless, he's, unless he just wants to talk and then wave his hand when he's done. Oh, yeah, if, let's do if that. If you don't have to interact with us, Chris, you can talk to the chat room. That'd be great. Chris, I'm going to ask you a question, and then I'm going to just assume when I see your mouth moving that you're talking. <laughs> this is so <laughs> ridiculous. But Chris is an awesome person, so he'll be cool with it. Um, I know everything that you've spoke about on Globusters, and I know that you've spoke with Crow uh, privately, and you've done something with him recently. And can you tell everybody what that is and when it's going to come out? And I hope what I'm saying is actually, actually what went on. Go. <laughs> Yes, uh, me and Crow uh, and Jason recorded a podcast on Monday evening, and I'm not sure when it's going to come out. I thought it was going to be out today. It may be out tomorrow. And I believe that will answer a lot of the questions and concerns that people have. Now, I know that this has created quite the storm, but I think we're still early into this. And there still may be a chance that we have missed something that is obvious that we haven't seen. But we have been through almost everything that we can think of to fit whether this is refraction within the, the telescope or whether it's a refracted image. And weirdly enough, Chris, I can hear you now because I'm listening off my phone and with an earbud in. So I think it's going to be okay. So can you hear me talking to you? Yes. Yes, I can hear you fine. If there's anything else that you want to add, <laughs> so, so sad. Please, please add that now. Okay. And just the other, the other thing I'd like to say is, uh, like I said, there's a lot of people that are up in arms about this. And that really surprises me because we're all supposed to be open-minded. So let's be open-minded. Let's relax. And anybody out there, part of this is we're trying to get people to help us figure this out with observations. So I would rather have people go out and do observations instead of coming at us with uh, speculation and hate. Like I said, we're still early into this research and we'd like all the help we can get. And anybody that hasn't stood behind one of these telescopes and actually looked through it or uh, experienced anything with these telescopes, it's just all speculation. And anybody with any questions, please email me. I'll have Patricia put it in the description. Chris, thank you very much for coming on. I truly appreciate it. Thank you, Patricia.
And thank you, everybody in chat. What is your email address? So in case anybody wants to jot it down. It's Broncos, N-O, the actual number one, F-A-N, at msn.com. And, okay, here's Chris's email address. It's B-R-O-N-C-O-S, that's Broncos, B-R-O-N-C-O-S, number one fan. Number is spelled N-O, then the number one fan at msn.com. That's Broncos, number one fan at msn.com, Broncos, N-O, one, F-A-N at msn.com. And I'll put that in the description box. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Patricia. And did you want me to talk about what we think it may be or may not be? So, Mark, we were able to pull it off one way or the other. Well, your, your mic's muted. Yep, we, we won that one. I don't know. I know there was a delay between me talking, but I was able to use my little earbud and listen on my phone to the Hangout. And I know there was a delay. Isn't that weird? This and, has never and, happened before. And oh, I've seen it. In fact, where we ran into it was the um, the after shows for Strange World. When Zulu would host those, I would yes. join in and I couldn't hear like, you know, there'd be like seven or eight people in there and I couldn't hear two of them. Now, was that recently? Yeah. Yeah. In fact, okay, well, uh, last last night, as a matter of fact. So what happens when it comes to YouTube, all of the weird things like thumbs up going crazy or thumbs down going crazy. It happens to many people at the same time yeah. or uh, thumbs up and not Google, showing or not or the Google. searches in Google, uh, not a, in YouTube, not working. They're yeah. back to working. And then this, it's an, a little affliction that goes around and then it, they'll they'll improve it. But well, come on. I think the filters was deliberate. I, I don't think that but, was an accident. Potentially, but it affected everyone, not just truth. It did. But I, I think that was, they just wanted to see how how oh, it was curbed it our enthusiasm. Yeah, or maybe it was they were testing for something they, they might do later. Mm. But uh, somebody in the live chat had said, well, you could have started a new Hangout instead of going through all that. Well, even that's not a guarantee. No guarantee. And also, we would have lost a lot of people who would have been like, I'm not bothering to go right. back. So, yeah, we, we just uh, won it. No, the show must go on. Exactly. And we, we pulled it off. And thank you to Chris. And Chris is such a good sport. That yep. is one genuine, awesome, nice, kind man. It's true. And Having met him several times in person, he just radiates goodness. He's a good guy. And even if in the end it turns out to be what he's observed and Crow's observed, our uh, lens flare or reflections, he's the person who's going to come to you and say, yeah, I was wrong yeah. because he's an honest guy. Anyway, wow. So, yeah, hope the live chat's still here after all that craziness. Well, they heard everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so good. They're fine. I'm the only one that really didn't hear anything. <laughs> I, I could <laughs> barely hear on your phone through your microphone. Right. I was afraid that that would be causing some feedback, but there was not, not much I could do with do nah, it. You're good. Well, let's see. In the news, um, we've got Alex Jones. And um, a little a week, a week, little over a week ago or so, InfoWars host, host Alex Jones did this sworn testimony, um, and he blamed the media <laughs> for giving him a, quote, form of psychosis right. that caused him to tell anybody that uh, the 20 children and six adults who uh, who died at Sandy Hook were, you know, they didn't die and they were crisis right. actors, blah, blah, blah. Because that's taboo now. It didn't happen. It's right. one of those topics that is yeah. really tough to bring up. So he's pretty much said he went temporarily crazy. Right. And the media did it to him. Oh, that's nice. Just blame other people right. and lie. But... It seems like Alex Jones is going to be on one of Logan Paul's impulsive podcasts. Oh, yeah. Yeah. In fact, I think it was pre recorded. It's already done. I saw the screenshot from it. Yeah. I saw the screenshot too. Yeah. But when is it going to air? And you know what? I could care less about either of them. Although, got to admit, early on in my awakening, way before Flat Earth, I did listen to Alex Jones. And then there was a point where. <sighs> It was new information that he was giving, and then it got to a point where it was the same old information with all of this hype and the right. selling of products, and something in my brain clicked, 
And it was a red flag. And I said, no more Alex Jones. And then I started looking elsewhere and I was much better able to discern where information comes from. I mean, Alex Jones has presented good information, but him backpedaling on Sandy Hook reminds me of somebody else of, of infamy who backpedaled on the moon landing. Right. Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan. Absolutely. And come on, the, the Alex Jones and Logan Paul team up, that is a match made in hell because they're using one, they're using each other. Absolutely. 100%. Uh, Alex Jones has been kicked out of just about every social media platform there is. And uh, Logan is looking for some sort of controversy to jump start. He's trying to, you know, get, get his career back up. And so the two of them going on the same show, they do have one thing in common, don't they? And that is both of them came out against Flat Earth in the last month. Right. Which was Alex Jones went on Joe Rogan's podcast with Eddie and went after Eddie Bravo wearing a NASA shirt and laid into him. And of course, uh, uh, Logan Paul doing his little mockumentary thing. And so between the two of them, what are the odds? Anyone want to take Vegas odds? I think it's pretty much 100 percent that the two of them are going to bring that up and that Alex is going to go after it and they will. But it's I still don't see it. To be fair, Alex Jones is much more intelligent than Logan, so I still don't know what they. Well, what it doesn't com- take much, so it's not. Well, safe. well, you know what I mean. Meaning, yes. uh, Alex has a lot of topics under his belt. He's been doing this. He's old enough to be his dad easily. Yes. yes. So where where's the common ground there, other than flat Earth? I mean, yeah, you can talk for a little bit, but it's not like they can just sit around and 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 just rap about anything yeah i mean what is it going to be alex jones talking about a conspiracy topic and logan going hey i put an alligator in my best friend's bed <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly the conversation yeah there's there's no they're not on the same frequency with the yeah. exception of flat earth alex will say that flat earth is terrible and, and logan mm-hmm. say yeah i trolled him good <laughs> the enemy so. of my enemy is my friend kind of yeah yeah so i you know what i'm kind of glad that they're doing this together get all the people who are slowing us down and they're burden over off into one side they could work together and just get out of our face the, the the media will not be i mean i know logan doesn't care because but the media will not be kind to this this thing where because Al, alex shouldn't be on there in the first place the media has been trying to shut him out and then all of a sudden logan comes in, it's like oh yeah come on my show and so then, I mean, the, I can't wait to see the headlines from this because they'll, there's, there's, it's low hanging fruit on both sides. Mm. Yeah. So. And I would never be interested in anything like that. I, even prior to Logan Paul punking flat earth, right. I was never a Logan Paul fan or watcher. I didn't even know who Jake Paul was with the everyday bro song. In fact, you told me about it here on a really old secret show. So, right. you know, these did, are people you- that, are, that I'm not their demographic. So. Did you know, by the way, that very recently, I, I got to mention this because it was tied into the article with uh, Logan Paul and, and Alex Jones, which was that Jake made a video against school violence. Uh, I think they were trying to tie it to like the Parkland shooting. He went and actually did, again, why everyone keeps trying to imitate Shane. <laughs> he goes and, and visits Parkland survivors. You know, and play, you know, uh, and and talks to them about how gun violence should be reduced, doesn't go after gun rights at all. In fact, most of his points were uh, having he wanted to have students bring bulletproof objects to school with them, like shields and things like that, or more security. And, it's just a way to get views. That's all it's about, really. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's just generally clickbait. There was it a, is clickbait. There was a beauty YouTuber, a woman who got caught doing something um against another beauty youtuber you know just like in uh flat earth world conspiracy world we, people go at each other this was one of those sorts of things one beauty guru was mad at another and then blah 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 happened and that person after their subscribers started going down and down and down um decided to make a comeback by making a shane dawson style video about the homeless problem in los angeles this is a beauty makeup female YouTuber wow. who's never cared about who would never that, even look ever. twice at a homeless person or probably a Shane Dawson video. And right. this person capitalized on that Shane Dawson style of filmmaking, which is all the rage now to make something that made her look like she was a caring person as opposed to a B I T C H. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, it's just, it's just trendy thing to do. 
Um, in the live chat, Jack Frost writes, I think that it's a very dumb move to go on Logan's show. Alex is officially the anti-Mark Sergeant, which is cool. Hmm. Yeah. So again, I hope they cancel themselves. Again, if if they decide to cover Flat Earth and that's what the media, new wave of headlines. Fantastic. I'll totally take it. Sure. Exactly. It Why doesn't not? really matter. Keep talking about Flat Earth, even if you're talking negatively about it. Yeah. Let's look into it. There was a, I won't name them, but there was a troll channel that came out this morning, did two full hours of trolling on the, uh, the intro and the first seven clues. Oh, and, wow. and I didn't listen to it, obviously. Congratulations. But, <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, it was, it was like, yeah, you know what? Do the other clues and do every other video I've ever done. Exactly. Yeah. Like I mean, a hundred more like you. Exactly. I feel the same way when people do videos about me and that I drink blood or sacrifice babies or yeah. uh, God knows what. I mean, I, I know these things aren't true and I know myself and it doesn't hurt my self-esteem. And if anybody watches those sorts of videos and believes that, I don't need them in my life anyway because they're not that bright. So yeah. what they really tend to do is just bring traffic to my channel and I'm okay right. with that. Because now, I interview some really interesting people that those people might get to meet. That being said, for the first time this week in a long time, I went to the Fallen States videos, you know, because they've been releasing those five minute chunks. Right. And because, because I'm not allowed to put them on my channel, I decided to go in and feed some of the trolls. So I would pick like every second or third troll because most of them were trolls. I just, you know, make, you know, my cute little comments here and there and, and just kind of poke them. And by God, within an hour, there was just just tons and tons of, of extra comments. So, hey, great. Fantastic. I will I will go after the trolls every once in a while. Let's see. Uh, another thing I wanted to talk about was the Nipsey Hustle thing. Have you been following that at all? <sighs> okay. I mean, First off, you, you and I are both old enough to know where the name originated from, which was Nipsey Russell. Mm -hmm. Nipsey uh, Russell. And most people who know who Nipsey Hussle, the rapper, is probably don't know. Don't know Nipsey, Nipsey Russell. Nipsey Russell is and just think, oh, that's a cool name. Okay. Nipsey it's Russell. not even his real name either. Was, was an iconic uh, American comedian, uh, born 1918, died uh, 2005, lived a long life, and was very active in the entertainment community from the 60s until the 90s. And you saw him everywhere. I mean, especially and where I remember him mostly was the 70s. He, you couldn't go uh, any given weekend without seeing him on some sort of show somewhere. He was always there. Always. And he, and he was not, it was not beneath him to do game shows. Game shows like the Secret Square and all of these other. Yeah, he wasn't, he wasn't part of the, Hol well, he wasn't the Secret Square, but he was always in the Hollywood Squares. Hollywood Squares. That's the yeah. one. I forgot the name. Yes. Now yeah. his real name is Hermes Ashedom. Which Wait, I know we're I talking said about Nipsey or, or we're talking about uh, uh, um, the other guy. <laughs> the other guy. I can't think of his name now. Nipsey. Nipsey, Nipsey Hustle, the rapper. Okay. His real name isn't Nipsey. Obviously. Anyway, so supposedly he was shot to death in South LA in front of his clothing store. You know, t-shirts, hoodies, right. uh, hats, and you know, rap merchandise. Um, it, it's called the Marathon. It, it's in a strip mall around where he grew up, and that's in uh, South South LA, Crenshaw area. Right. And he was 33 years old, so that rings a little bit of a, yeah. a a bell and puts a red flag up. And this was I'd my never heard 31st. Of him. Never heard of him. In my I'd life. never heard of him either. But then again, he's I'm not I'm not the demographic for that age wise. Uh, it's just not music that I like. But some people here do, and you know whatever. Um, the thing about this is, is it a real death or is it the creation of a martyr for people that do follow him? Hey. Now, he was associated with Dr. Sebi. Dr. Sebi is a man who appeared to be very intelligent, is no longer with us. Dr. Sebi was a threat to big pharma, the, uh, I call it the medical industrial complex. Uh, you know, people who were trying to prescribe drugs and poisons. And um, he was all about natural cures, curing cancer, um, AIDS, and promoting plant-based living and that kind of thing. Now, another thing that Nipsey was doing, aside from wanting to make a documentary about Dr. Sebi, was he was going to try and unite the big gangs, the, uh, the Crips and the Bloods. I know you're in one of those gangs. <laughs> so. uh, that would be the Crips. <laughs> I figured. Anyway. People said he was a white hat and he was going Word. to go to the police with information that he wanted to reveal to them and then 
he was killed because of that. That's one of the theories. Now, recently, he was seen wearing a Tupac Shakur shirt, who also was gunned down, and people think Tupac's alive, so there's a little bit of conspiracy hint there. But then again, we often read things, because we're so suspicious, right? We read things into things that may not be there. That's what happens. That's right. why crazy accusations come. So anytime you see things that look suspicious, we can't really go by there are no coincidences, because really sometimes there are. Sure. But for the most part, they're not. They're not. Most of the time, <laughs> so, they're not. Anyway, um, so he was wearing a Tupac shirt recently, uh, possibly another hoax death, they say. And um, the shooter's name is Eric Holder, which is crazy when you find out that Eric Holder himself is the guy who did the payouts for the Sandy Hook victims. Right. You know, the real Eric Holder, uh, the American lawyer who was the 82nd attorney general of the U.S., Right. for some time. So that makes it even more odd and crazy because Eric Holder is, I mean, not a super common name, but I mean, weirdly enough, it's tied with a conspiracy and, and taking guns and that kind of thing. Right. So it's maybe if you believe that this is a fake to death, it's a callback to Eric Holder by having the shooter be named Eric Holder. Next up, this Eric Holder character is going to be represented by one of OJ Simpson's lawyers. Whoa, mind blown. There we go with another event that many of us took for granted to be real, as I did when it occurred. But now we've looked at it with these new eyes we have, and we see that there's something wrong there. So what's going on there? That particular O.J. Simpson ex-lawyer, we had several lawyers, is going to be taking the case pro bono. Now, there's this video that came out, um, and... It was Nipsey getting CPR after being put on a gurney where he had one shoe off, no, one sock on and one sock off. But when it comes to uh, initiation into Masons, having one shoe off is one of those things. Right. That could be nothing because he could have lost his shoe in a sock, of course. Could be coincidence or it could be something, you know, that's that these people telegraphing their intentions to others. Right. And then they say that the body that was in the, uh, the fire truck ambulance was much bigger than Nipsey Russell's body. So that was weird. And oh. then the CPR done on Nipsey Russell looked as if to many people who are looking into this sort of thing, as if it was a dummy or it wasn't even the right technique for CPR. And I don't know how to do CPR, but many here in the live chat do. One of the weirdest things is I saw this interview with Nipsey's uh, grandmother and she heard about her grandson being shot twice. And uh, she said about the guy who shot and killed her grandson, I hope Eric Holder doesn't die in custody, which is a weird thing to say. Is that what a bereaved grandparent would say about someone who shot their grandson? Hmm. So um, the whole thing is quite suspicious. Part of it could be, I mean, there's so many ways to look at it. Is this some kind of a big thing or is it all a cover up because that Nipsey Hussle was going to put that documentary out with Dr. Sebi um, that I mentioned earlier, all the cures for all the things like cancer and AIDS, et cetera. Um, part of it looks staged. Part of it looks like a setup. And then, Recently, there was, because John Lennon, people say that was a not a real death. That was a whole setup thing because, you know, the, the world is a stage and everyone's a player. Um, one of the people that was at a record release party for Nipsey Russell's latest album was wearing a John Lennon T-shirt, which was a weird thing to wear by the particular guy who was wearing it. So, I don't know, it's something to think about. Is this another one of those? Is Maybe. this pushing an agenda? Is this covering up the doc Dr. Sebi thing? Or is this trying to put us in a state of fear? What is it? Do we know? Does anyone oh, know? Too early to tell. I don't know. I mean, it's a minor fear beat if it is. Because for a lot of people to be like, oh, uh, as we know, rappers have a higher um, chance of, of getting gunned down in the street than other people. Yeah, that makes sense. But so. he was... He also had some coded messages, I guess, or I'm being paranoid, in some of his songs about flowers being left on cement. And he'd made this really cryptic 
tweet, and I don't remember the exact wording of the tweet before he died, his last tweet, which hmm. was something along the lines of uh, enemies make make you a better person. I mean, that was the, the gist of the last tweet. Hmm. So um, anyway, no, hopefully know. the Dr. Sebi documentary will still be released by Nipsey's family, and then we'll know that indeed this wasn't staged to quash that and quash the truth about alternative health care. Hmm. Um, but anyway, Maybe. I thought it was interesting. And I know that, that is an interesting story. Everybody who's interested in the, the, that sort of thing is also interested in flat earth. So, right. Yeah. It's one of those things. Um, <laughs> I know there was other things you we were going to talk about. It kind of threw me that we couldn't get Chris to talk on our show. Kind of That's all right. Bummer. It's all right. We got, we got any backup stuff. Um, Kazakhstan going into space. Did you hear about that one? Oh, sorry. My, uh, something just started playing on, uh, YouTube. Um, no, I didn't know about Kazakhstan. I knew about Israel that supposedly landing a probe tomorrow on the moon. Yeah. They, uh, they, they launched an MS 11 cargo spacecraft from Baikonur. I know I'm saying that wrong. It's an unmar it un manned, maybe unmarked, unmanned, uh, unmanned cargo spacecraft. It went on a three hour flight, Kazakhstan to the International Space Station. Huh. And uh, I wonder if our friend, the uh, Match.com daters, <laughs> is involved in any way. Gosh. No, but I'm thinking he's been milking this for a long time. He wasn't even, I think the reason was, I looked up his bio, he wasn't really military. He was one of those scientists that was chosen. Right. To be he part of the military, program, he wouldn't be allowed to be on Mash.com. No, no, I don't think he would either. I think he just lucked out, and it's like, yeah, I did his time, and now he can use that line forever. Pick up chicks, and he's yeah. been single. But then yeah. again, so have I, right? <laughs> For Seriously, that's time. one of the like the ultimate pickup lines. I'm an astronaut, baby. Fly me. <laughs> <Oof>. <laughs> Is that it? Yeah, yeah. Um, Let's see. Oh, there's even more to the Nipsey Hustle store story. Um, there was a big stampede um, at a memorial too, and a bunch of people in the news story. It said many people lost their shoes, and everybody who knows about hoax events, these sorts of things, know mm -hmm. that shoes play a role. And so there was a stampede, and people lost their shoes. Now. Unless I'm wearing a high heel that's got no strap on the back, yeah. if I had a run, my athletic shoes or flats aren't going to fall off. When you run, do your shoes fall off? Most of us, I would say no. So why at all? Uh, some events, athletes do shoes fall in, foot, off? in football, but that's about I, I. That's all I've ever seen. It's tough to do. It's really yeah. tough to do. There's something to that shoes going off. And also, I've been to the Holocaust Museum. I've been to one in New York, and I've been to one in D.C. And there's, and there's the shoe display of all the shoes of the people that went on the trains that, you know, were taken to the camps. Right. And a lot of us know a little bit about the Holocaust situation, which I won't mention here, but you know what I'm talking about. I and do. the shoes were very, they're a very heart-wrenching thing to see especially old shoes like those, shoes on the ground, that's so touchingly human. And they get you right where, right in the feels, as they say. You know, I, I realize that uh, I'm as white as Wonder Bread and marshmallows, but I do remember, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, that rappers, <laughs> I can't, I'm going to sound so white saying this, <laughs> rappers wear their shoes very, very loose. Remember Run DMC, and I know I'm saying this again like a white guy, uh, my Adidas. Oh, right. And how you would wear, in fact, you would wear a lot of the times, at least back back in the day, you would wear your shoes sometimes without laces. I agree with that. But when you see at these events, like um, there was one, I don't want to mention the events because I don't want to have the channel taken down, a certain event at a nightclub um, in a certain place where most of the people liked their own sex. Oh, the Florida oh, nightclub. Yeah, right, right, right. Uh, yeah, there was pe I mean, those people weren't mostly rappers, and there was shoes lost. The shoes lost at all of these events. I don't know. Right. Lace them up, people. Exactly. Safety first. <laughs> I'm a, no, I'm a huge fan about double lacing, you know, double knotting. I never, you know, I've never had a shoe just come off. Now, I've been flat tired before, 
you know, we, we grew up in that oh. era where flat tiring people was funny. Somebody comes up behind you and steps on the back of your um, shoe. Yeah. If you were wearing a low top, it would pop off. Right. Sure. But if you're doing a high top, lace them up. <laughs> Let's talk anyway. about the black hole. That's something we can discuss. Oh, God. Do we have to talk about the black hole? Of the black hole in space. Can we talk about the conference or something? We'll talk about that after we talk. All about right. The black, uh, the black hole photograph in space, which yes. is, of course, impossible. And where are you looking? And everybody that knows anything nowadays knows that there's no photography that will actually do it. It's even if you believe what you see, it's just an electronic image. It that looks has like been a glowing donut, glowing orange donut in the blackness of space. Yeah, that totally makes sense. Of course. Donut in space. I mean, hey, everyone yeah, likes donuts. They're tri they're hip and trendy right now, right? It's a space reinforcement story. Yes. That's all it is. 40 billion kilometers across, 3 million times the size of Earth. And it's been described by scientists as a monster. Yep. Yeah. So. Whatever. Be careful. Of the, the space hole. the space reinforcement stories just don't have the, the impact that they did anymore because not that many people are buying it. They have to keep putting them out there, though, because they have to keep reminding people. It's like a tap. Deek, 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 deek. Space is real. Space deek, is real. Deek. Space is real. Israel's on the moon. Yeah. Black hole in space. That's all it is. You Atmosphere even... is extended past moon. Right. People don't even have to read the stories or watch the videos on it. It's true. But as they're browsing through the internet, as people do, looking for dog food on sale, whatever it is they're looking for, those yeah. stories will show on their sidebar, they'll see it, and it will reinforce in a subliminal true. fashion. And that's what that's all about. Very true. Let's see what's going on in our live chat. How's everyone doing? By the way, did you happen to catch, not, not that you're not required to by law, uh, the uh, discussion I had with the husband and wife team from Apollo Nearing, Let's hear all about it. That's my it, way of saying no. <laughs> they were a, um, it's a little channel, just a tiny, tiny little YouTube channel called Apollo Nearing. And I just happened to watch, they were talking, they were arguing between, they were sitting right now, you know, what we see sometimes with channels where they're just one person or two of the people believe in the globe and one person believes in flat. And they're going back and forth and the back and forth was cute. You know, she believed wholeheartedly. He wasn't really there. And I commented on their channel. I go, you know what? I like what you're doing there, and I don't usually listen to a 40-minute husband and wife discussion of Flat Earth, but in this case, I did. If you guys want any advice on this or you want a little help getting there, you know, me being like a Flat Earth counselor, marriage counselor, uh, I said I'd be happy to do it. And they said, yeah, let's do it. Why, why don't you come on? We'll do it, to, do it into a live stream. And we did it for almost an hour, and it was a lot of fun. And uh, it, was, it, was, it was cool. It was, wasn't often that things like that work out. But it was it was neat. So anyway, check so, that out. It's on my channel. You haven't broken up a marriage, is what you're trying to say. Well, maybe you have, but that one you didn't. No, but I'm willing to learn. <laughs> Funny. Trouble about is in our live chat and says, I have totally lots sweet. of footage of black holes. They are out of focus stars. If Very there are any images at all, I mean, come on, any Anybody knows that long distance photography, and by that I mean like from Hubble, they, they are sent to an artist's rendering that where they're, you can interview. I mean, they, those guys have been interviewed. Basically, they, they have creative license and NASA says, okay, we need this in sort of a bluish hue and a reddish hue. You interpret the rest, you know, make it seem sort of organic, kind of like, and I hate to drop his name, kind of like what Matt was doing. If you can paint or draw authentic looking space images, <sighs> You are employable. No question. So anybody out there who needs a job, you know where to go. Right. Somebody should infiltrate that. NASAgov.net or whatever it is. Na <laughs> no, it's, it's NASA.gov, dear. Oh, sorry. Well, That's right. Obviously. Um, let's see. Um, da, da, da. Oh, Ginger Sugarbush in the live chat was talking with Chris Van Matry, who was on earlier, if you missed that. And we weren't able to hear Chris, but the live chat could. But Mark and I could not. So anyway, we worked that out. But... Uh, Ginger says, I had the same problem the other day. It turns out I needed to go through Chrome. Nothing else will work. Hmm. So for those out there who had this problem, I don't use Chrome, but I can use it. And next time I set up a Hangout, I'll go through Chrome. But uh, maybe There's a bunch maybe, to choose from. Well, maybe hmm. I have to go through. I go through Safari. I've got a MacBook. That's just what it defaults to. Yeah, but it's been working for you before. You have yeah, like, like the whole time. But I mean, through my YouTube career. 
<laughs> since 2015, there's always been little things like a couple of weeks. I couldn't even do a hangout. I couldn't start one. The system wouldn't work. So maybe this is just a temporary thing. But if you've got this problem happening, try setting the whole thing up with Chrome. That could work. Right. So I should also mention real fast that even though I, I, I said this earlier that I, I do and go feed the trolls from time to time, I don't make a lot of videos dedicated to feeding the trolls. There's somebody who's inspired me recently, not that I'm going to imitate it because I can't. She's way more talented than me in this department mm -hmm. as far as keeping her cool. And that is uh, Summer from No Lies, Dome Skies. Oh, my gosh. Summer's latest video. Yeah. No Lies, Dome Skies. I'll try to remember to put it in the description box of this video. It definitely needs anyone here to watch it. She's yeah. just super kind, super positive, super fun. And she's so talented and smart. Yeah. I mean, I've never been that talented and smart. Definitely not at her age. Well, yeah, I mean, she's young, super, super young. And it's called Reacting to Hate Comments on My Flat Earth Videos Part 2. Part 2. Mm -hmm. That's brilliant. It I is. Mean, it's absolutely, it's, it, she, you can tell peer pressure means nothing to this girl. She absolutely just rolls with it. And uh, it's, it's fantastic. I love her responses, love the execution. Great, great yeah. stuff. And the fact that her brother was illegally driving that car in the, in the beginning of it. <laughs> exactly. It's also brilliant. Matt Long is in it. And I think Matt Long is going to be on with Robbie Davidson of Celebrate Truth. Um, Matt yes. and Jessica have their Stay Woke channel, and they're going to be doing something. Maybe and I will be today. seeing I don't know. Matt up at the Calgary conference after we get back from New Zealand. Hmm. Very yeah. cool. Well, let's talk about New Zealand. But I do want to say hello in the live chat to Ryan Q. Vincent and Jose J.G. Gonzalez, Game Film Hub and Truth is Truth. And... Karamisan Safehold, whoa, who says, Patricia, listen to the YouTube Journey of Souls audiobook. It will explain a lot of your life. I will do that. I need some explanations for this life. <laughs> definitely. Um, oh, and uh, Captain Crunch is saying, say the channel name again. And I think all people, free people might be putting it in the live chat. It's No Lies Domed Skies. So, uh, no limed domed skies check it out edited halls is here in the live chat too and uh adrian marcus please subscribe to the channel my channel too as well as everyone else's subscribe to each other in case we ever get that problem happening again where we're unable to do searches and then when you subscribe and you hit the bell at least you'll be notified of the people you subscribe to as newest stuff and uh, that way um and I'm, I'm closing in on uh, uh on a, a milestone number so you know, I guess it's good to ask for subscribers when you do that. I've got 18,903 as of Good for you. Days, which is uh, March 10th. Excuse me, yeah, April 10th. <laughs> what, what month is it? Of course, subs can only do so much. It's, well, it's, it's the other stuff that counts. The thing about having subscribers, I know all those subs don't watch the channel because I'd have much larger view count. I've been in this thing since 2015, I think I got sub to very early on by many people who, you know, now may not even watch anybody's YouTube videos. It's true. Who knows if they even are alive anymore? You know what I'm saying? In 2015, mm -hmm. lots of changes can occur. But I'm, I'm grateful for anybody who uh, is still subbed and does watch and definitely anyone who would like to sub now. Now would be a good time. <laughs> yes. So um, something else I wanted to discuss. Oh, New Zealand. New Zealand. I I'm starting to get excited. What about you? Okay, so the official New Zealand conference. Uh, and so we will be doing a show next week. Mm -hmm. uh, however, we won't be doing a show on the following Wednesday because I will, well, I mean, you can, I suppose, but nobody will watch it. The um, <laughs> I, By that, I mean, it's all about me. No, I, I will be in the air on the 24th. Wait, you, wait, you're in the air on, when are you leaving? I can't remember. Uh, I, I think you're on the air on the 24th too, because I yeah. think we're, we're landing at the same time. Yeah, we're both in the air on the on on next the, the week after Wednesday. So the official conference down there in Auckland is going to be on the 27th and the 28th, Saturday and Sunday. So F check -E it out if you get F E N Z. F E N Z is Flat Earth New Zealand. Right, and, and you can uh, you can look it up. All you have to do is type in Flat Earth New Zealand Expo. It'll top pop up at the top of the list. It's part of the Event Bright system. Uh, there are other links, but that's probably the easiest one to get to. 
and yeah we're gonna be there for it and i'm gonna be staying late and and visiting the shire and doing other little extracurricular things because i've never been down there so mm -hmm. it'll be fun and i think you're staying for a little while yeah i am too i want i've never been to new zealand and yeah. i know that robbie davidson's wife is a kiwi from new zealand so robbie's already there as far as i know yeah he just yeah he just left and a shout out to Adrian Morrison. Wait a minute, how is he Putting doing a hangout? Wait, how is he doing a hangout if? I don't know. Is he doing it from the airport? The internet? <laughs> the internet, maybe. Because he's doing he's doing a thing with Matt Long. Yeah, but maybe it's pre-recorded and it's doing oh, that's what it probably is. Yeah. It's probably pre-recorded. We have that sort of technology. Uh, so yeah, that that'll be really really fun. F E N Z. So yeah, you can go to f e n z expo .co .nz. there you go there's also pertaining to the shire there is a plea for the shire animal rescue sanctuary and i'm going to put a link in the description box for this if you want to help out a person or a couple of people who are helping out animals there in new zealand charlie freak is one of the people's names and kaliwag they have an animal rescue sanctuary and they need help with the costs five dollars a month if you want to help and i'm going to put the link to help out animals in the description box of this video since we're speaking of new zealand so Here, i just pasted the new zealand thing and i will also paste it into your skype thank you so there it is f-e-n-z expo.co.nz and i'll put it in the description box of this video and, and they speak well. mostly english so don't be afraid if you go down there I, you I'm you excited. believe me when I did my that segment this morning was like you know um, what was it change my mind that segment yes you remember the people who were calling in had heavy Australian accents who even with my headphones cranked up and like being really quiet mm -hmm. it's tough I it's don't tough. really have an accent issue but then again for a while in two thousand seven or something I don't know for a while I dated a man from Aberdeen Scotland who I met in Houston Texas. Oops, something just fell, sorry. And he had a very almost British English accent when he spoke to me or anybody here in Houston. But when he would talk to his family in Aberdeen, it was a thick accent with lots of Aberdeen slang. And it was kind of hard, definitely hard. I bet. Um, it's a good thing he's gone. Yeah, well, it's a good thing he's gone for many reasons. But <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, I do want to let people know that... Uh, Mike Williams of the Sage of Quay Radio Hour is not going to be doing too much more on his Paul McCartney conspiracy uh, video thing. He feels like he's reached the end of the road on that. So he's got the Paul is Dead channel and the Sage of Quay channel. He's keeping the Sage of Quay channel and um, the Paul is Dead channel will continue to still be up. But, he, but he's not going to really do too much more on the Paul is Dead stuff. But... He's my guest tomorrow, April 11th, 2019, Mike Williams from Sage Quay, talking a little bit more about new discoveries in the whole, is Paul McCartney, has he been replaced, is he dead, et cetera, et cetera. So please join me for that. And um, on the 12th, which is Friday, I'm going to, I hear an echo, I'm going to be talking with Jonathan Shalimar. And a lot of people don't know who Jonathan Shalimar is. I know who he is. I know who he is. Tell us. Uh, he's the guy that's doing the Mount Shasta conference. Yes. He's the one putting together the Mount Shasta conference. And that one's coming up in September. But if you want to hear about who is this guy, I never heard of Jonathan Shalimar. Is he a flat earther? Is it legit? When is it happening? Check this show out on Friday, the 12th at 6 p.m. Eastern time. And Jonathan Shalimar will be on camera live with me. And we'll find out all about this conference that he's putting on. Uh, what he hopes to achieve with it, who the speakers are, and more. It's a very limited gathering, by the way. I mm -hmm. mean, it is a it is a fairly small group. He's gonna. He swears he's. Uh, I'm only selling whatever it is, 180 tickets, 170 tickets. Pretty guarantees he's gonna fill the room, and it's gonna be a limited number of speakers, and there will be um, a lot of chanting, from what I understand. Robes, hoods, <laughs> that sort of thing. Good to know. A lot of, a lot of ritual involved. I yeah. think. Gosh, don't get that rumor started. Sorry, here's the sound bite. Ritual. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> um, 
Uh, by the way, uh, we should also mention real fast the uh, the Calgary conference, and I will be. In fact, I just booked my tickets this morning. And that's I'll be I'm going up. So. The what? That, I'm not going to that one, so it'll be potato free. <laughs> oh, that's funny. You should write that down. Mm -hmm. The uh, we uh, I'm going to be there the 16th through the 20th, and I think Robbie Davids is going to be there, and Matt Long, and I will have a chance to meet again because I, I only better think once. Summer Lowen. Summer's awesome. Yeah. So you I did have a chance to meet her in Denver. Yeah. Well, you uh, kind of blew it. <laughs> yeah, I know. I missed my. But yeah, that was one of that's one of my big regrets. There was that she actually made it into the Logan Paul. This is my dig on her right now. Uh -huh. She made it into the Logan Paul vid, and I didn't. <laughs> Who's that's laughing true. now? But um, the whole event is May seventeenth and May eighteenth, Edgemont Community Association. And that is in Calgary. If you yep. want information, you can book tickets now on Eventbrite or TruthQuest Calgary's Facebook and, page. And do you know why that happened, by the way? That whole conference that happened? No. Because the two women who you remember from the LA conference that were uh, sitting in front of us, the Canadian women, uh, one of them was... Yes. yes. One of them was Sarah Stewart. And she was like, once she heard the Toronto conference was on hiatus, she decided, you know what? I'm going to do one. She didn't even blink. She she started organizing a Calgary thing Im immediately. And here we are. So everything's going smoothly. I just spoke with her last night. Every Everything couldn't be better. We talked earlier on a very, you know, I don't know, tenderhearted, not flat earth related topic about Bob and Cammie and their new dog because they're dog D.O.G. died. Um, you know, not recently, but you know, when your animal friend dies, it seems like right. recently for the rest of your life. Here is said pooch. No. So cute. That's I don't cute. know what the name is going to be yet. Um, I, I like Bark Sergeant myself. but <laughs> Wow. Again, I don't and, think and that should be a t-shirt anywhere. Bob is anywhere. thinking the name is going to be Dave. Um, but we will all find out together. If somebody wants to morph my face into some sort of dog and put Bark Sergeant below it, or we are all Bark Sergeant, yeah, that would be hilarious. <laughs> That's a good one. Um, I do Super want to direct funny. everyone to the Rodrigo Ferrari Nunez channel. He's coming on next with something that he's created. He's going to be discussing a video uh, from the people called uh, the We Need More Space channel who did a video talking to the creators of behind the curve and rodrigo is not a fan of behind the curve however he's dissecting everything that the people involved with that have put out there and that's coming up next on the rodrigo ferrari nunez channel nice and that concludes this episode of secret show flat earth and other hot potatoes and uh, i think we're at what 288 cool wow. cheers awesome Cheers. Um, I ran out of wine, so I'm going to drink gasoline. You're drinking out of a coffee cup? What about that giant pour in that glass? I already drank that. <laughs> Are you serious? That's gone, honey. And I'm not even able to finish this. It's like the Sahara in here. And you're completely sober. That's because you're weak. You are a <laughs> teetotaler. Oh, you kill yeah. me. Seriously, yeah, yeah. you guys want a cheap date? There it is. Well, not the food, but <laughs> the drinks. You only have to buy one drink. Not the food, not anything else. Not anything else. Alcohol. Really, <laughs> only the alcohol. And even then, if it's one drink, she, you're probably going to order something ridiculous. So Yes, most likely. Anyway, it's been great. I've enjoyed the show. Thanks to all in the live chat. Please give the video a thumbs up. And um, I think that we should, we used to do this, but we, we, we'd stop doing it. Come yeah. back to this video if you can remember and put hashtag bark sergeant. Oh, hashtag bark sergeant after this me. video goes from live back to uh, you know residing on YouTube in the comment section. Hashtag bark sergeant. And that's it. See you tomorrow. Uh, Sage Quay talking about Paul is dead and then Jonathan Shalimar on Friday on this very same radio channel or YouTube channel. All right. Keep it flat. Hail Hydra, George Clooney, go power coin. Hat, no hat, I don't know. What do you think? Bark Sergeant. Not Bark Sergeant.